You know what? The Muppets are an amazing thing. Oh, look at us. I think we're live. Are we live? I... Are you live? Pulse check. Uh, maybe. 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 Well, welcome to Studio 586B Stories. We're going to do another session of 10 questions. This time, we're getting brave. We're going to get out there in the world. We're going to talk to a couple. We're going to talk to two people. Two not one. people. Two. One. Two. Dose. Did we get... Oh. Does this make five interviews for the week, even though I only scheduled four and I meant to do five? You know what? I think this yes. makes five. Can, can we write that off, Janelle? This is Janelle and Rick. <laughs> Janelle is officially giving us permission to take this as two interviews. How you doing, Janelle? Very good, thank you. <laughs> How you doing back there, Rick? I'm excellent. Thanks, Matt. Most excellent. So we're going to start with the first question. It's a pretty basic one. I think everybody can, can kind of deal with it, though some people find additional meaning in the question. So. Where are you from? Where are you from, Rick? <laughs> oh, where am I from? <laughs> See, this, this is another one of those I don't know. <laughs> trick question. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> My mama. <laughs> <laughs> the hospital. Yeah. 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 Like you, you can you can look at it through the form, and you can say, uh, "I'm I'm from my parents." Um. But that's that's not the me that that I've come to know. That's that's the me who's had this wonderful experience on Earth, and I get to play the game here. But it's just playing the game here. Um, so where am I from? Good question, Matt. But. Uh, I'm from Winnipeg, Matt. <laughs> you said you had to have the two of us. I love it. I love it. It, 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 it but it's perfect. I it, like, and and so I, I hadn't thought about doing the couples interviews. It's, it's a funny thing. It was Rick that brought it up. Um, he was, he was just like, no, to talk to Janelle. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. It's fine. But trust me. Trust me how this is going to work. <clears throat> but it began, so I have one of the things that I have as a rich touchstone in my life was a group of really good Christians. Like, that, so my mom's family comes from a traditional Judeo Christian background mm -hmm. um, with an amazing outlook. And not to disparage any other outlooks, but very much based on teaching of Christ as opposed to other options. Yeah. Um, and so I have this, uh, there's an amazing couple. It's actually uh, my mom's cousin and her husband. And it was my discussions with, with Rick that opened me up to the idea of they have allowed me to meet people where they are in a world where a lot of people can kind of the religious right versus Christian thought. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, it was in that conversation, I realized, no, I need to talk to them because they, just as much as I talk to all of my friends that come from other circles and other philosophical thoughts, they made it so I'm in a good place with that piece and I could explore the other pieces. That makes sense. They're like I'm not attached to a specific faith at all. I don't have a religion or a specific belief system. But right. in a world where it's pretty easy to fall into circles where just the mere fact people have a faith can be considered a bad thing, I had mm -hmm. a history of some really cool people that I could go, no, that, that's not the only reality. And, and without you guys, I never would have thought of, talk to Judy and Mike. I, I got to talk to Judy and Mike. I got to have that rich conversation that we have with people of my particular more yeah. my spirituality having yeah. that conversation with somebody different perspective totally changes it yeah so yeah you, oh go ahead go ahead Janelle. No, i was just to say you begin to see the the commonality and mm -hmm. uh, you begin to be able to read anything and see the wisdom in it as opposed to um just focusing on the dogma or the little translation of it and um, there, anyone that has the ability to do that, they live a more graceful life. I, I call it my AK. I, I don't. Back in the day, there was a song by um, a young gentleman named Ice Cube. 
<laughs> they talked about having a good day and how he didn't have to use his AK. I assume he meant, you know, yeah, a gun yeah, that he you, was talking about. You know about. the AK he, yeah, was, he was talking about. He was talking about a machine yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Talk, I talk about using my AK every day. The idea hmm. that if you admit you know nothing, there's ambient knowledge in every moment. Yes, absolutely. Brings you back to the present. Right. There's, oh, wow, look at this cool stuff here where I've never been before. Mm -hmm. you know, I, oh, I've never been in this moment. Oh, I've never been in this moment. <laughs> right, right. Oh, damn. Oh, I've never been in this moment. I've had, some, I've had some moments where, like, I literally, like, took a step back from the situation and I was like, ooh, this is a nice situation. I just like being here, you know? And then you get a deja vu moment and you're like, wait a minute, have I been in this moment before? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then you get that Vuja Day moment. Vuja Day? That's that feeling What's that Vuja Day? nobody has ever had a moment this like this before. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> what? What are you? So, like, one's for both of you, and it's going to kind of have to go separate because I'm assuming you met, met each other at an appropriate age. But the second question is, when you look back, we all end up have, having those spots that we remember as children. Um, I, one of, I always remember how giant sandboxes were at University of Michigan Northern, um, University of Michigan Married Housing. Um, the biggest sandboxes ever. I mean, they were huge. Getting across them before you had to pee yourself was hard. It was a whole thing. <laughs> But I've been back to those sandboxes. <laughs> Not as big as you as you quite remember, are they? They're they're a little smaller than <laughs> I remember. But what are your what are your what are your first memories? I can go on this one. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, yeah. I I I'm pretty sure of this memory is um, my first memory was uh, eating sardines with my grandfather in. Um, their their house they had a rural house and uh i know that that's my another very early memory i have is of my grandmother dying and that's when i was four years old but my um grandfather died before my grandmother did so the memory of me sitting having sardines with him in his kitchen has to be uh the earliest right that's wow. crazy. But you don't remember his passing. But you don't, yeah. I, you know, I, I think I was so young that they didn't take me. Mm. And the re mm. reason I remember my grandmother's is uh, because I was around four years old, and um, it was the first dead person I ever saw. And actually, the image of my grandmother, uh, I could see her. Even I remember when I was a teenager. I could still remember exactly what she looked like. I, I can actually still, when I think about it, I, I can still see her face because um, I had just never seen a dead person. So I had that much impact on me. So, so it was impactful. But it very much, you know what, I, I'm trying to, so the first, interestingly, what I, the, the thought that came to mind was the first, I was nine. And I'm trying to remember if I picture my grandfather alive or dead as an odd thought in my head relative to yours. It, it's interesting which pieces stick. That I have memories from three years old. Yeah. But then I don't have a very clear memory other than of falling asleep at the funeral for my grandfather. I can't really remember what my dad looked like, like when he was dead. I can't remember what he looked like alive, but I can't remember. After, after he passed, I can't remember what he looked like. I, I've kind of, it, it's almost like my memory has like blocked it out or something oh, wow. or like made it hazy. Like I can't really remember, I remember the situation and I remember how the situation looked. Just, I don't remember it, details, you know? Right. So when you think back to the sardines, is that like do, when you access it, is it a fond memory? Yeah, it would be. It would be a, a fond memory. And uh, the strange thing is that I can't, I can't actually remember seeing my grandfather. I know he's there, but um, it, because they were in a rural 
uh, part of the country, uh, they didn't have great lighting. I remember it was in, in the corner and it was in the dark and uh, they just had the door open for lighting into the kitchen. And uh, so I don't actually see my grandfather's face, but I, I know that we were sitting together and I didn't get to see him very often because they were out in the country. Even though um, we did see my other grandparents, my father's parents quite often, uh, we only rarely got to go out to see my mother's family. So I think uh, what was common didn't stick with me, but what was unique is what, what held as a, as a child. That, I think that's very, I think that's, yeah. The, the mm -hmm. moments that are... Out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary. Yeah. And that, you know, stick for some, like, so, yeah, the University of Michigan married housing thing is, for me, it's, it's where my first memories are all the way around. And it's because I think it's where I felt the safest in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That married housing was great for kids to grow up because it was people from all over the world that all valued education. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. But a lot of it, yeah, I don't know that it's clear pictures in my head, like Rick was saying. So what what are your first memories, Janelle? What it what it what do you remember from being a wee lass? Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't have any um any that I can place that one is um my first memory or not. Um I I remember lots of things from childhood, like we walk to grade school or um, coming home from lunch one day um, with a girlfriend of mine in the summertime and my mother, um, we had like a really special lunch scheduled. So she made tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches and we got some in the swimming pool and then um, walking back to school and just thought that was really cool because it was something you wouldn't be able to fit in normally over right. lunchtime. Right, you know? right. I remember um, walking to school in the winter time and cutting through the golf course and playing in the ditches and um, yeah, like I have just a, a bunch of memories, but nothing that I could say. Oh, this is my um, first one. So that, yeah, well, that's it's interesting because I think I, we all have a very. I, so I've always found this question an effective question that that it, I think it's the part that makes it easier to talk. First off, is admitting that we were children once but <laughs> that i've always so i constantly wonder what effect like are those moments that are defining do they have a long term like are those noticeable as how a person's personality grows I, I, I haven't found any corollary yet. I just love asking the question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question to, to reflect on because um, there are things that I remember that I wouldn't say had any effect on uh, the way I perceive or experience life now. But um, I, I also know there's lots of things that I can't remember that probably influence me in all sorts of ways. Like, mm -hmm. When you, you have any experience and you make up your mind in that moment what it means about you and the world, and then you navigate life from there, I'm sure that's happening all the time. And I I just don't, <laughs> you know, don't know what's doing what inside me. It, so my big thing was, so what, part of what's led to this is there came a moment where I realized that primary I had for validating my reality um, was a liar. That in the end, to avoid cognitive dissonance, my perspective will make up a story. Oh, your your brain plots out things that it doesn't want to remember. Like if something is traumatic enough, or if something is difficult enough, your brain will completely block it out. Like yeah, absolutely. Full stop. Yeah, so, and it's just not to kind of protect you. Right. Well, yeah. and, and so I began thinking of us, all of us, as blind mice. I think African <laughs> proverb, if you're wondering which blind mice we're headed to, no, these ones get to keep their tails. That's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah. But so that if you imagine the African proverb of the three blind mice who come across an elephant, they're all describing their reality legitimately. 
Yeah. They're all defining their perspective. But it doesn't change that there's still an elephant in the room. Yeah. But don't bump. That's my, that's my elephant in the room joke. Um, <laughs> but to some extent, that I began to wonder if, as much as it's all illusion, I kind of hold on. Don't hold on to. Not attached to it or something. I don't know. Lack of attachment can be very confusing at times. I'm not overly attached to what that means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. That I began going, looking at it as like, what if all the perspectives were a piece of the puzzle? A part of the elephant, if you will. That if maybe I don't trust my perspective to define the world because I see it as a veil I can kind of that I can see through sometimes. But that by trying to see more eyes, I began more. Yeah. Um that I I, I be I I started on a real kick of, I want to see through other people's perspectives. And that's part of the reason I'm surrounded by artists. Mm -hmm. Is that they're willing to show me their perspective. Like, I don't have to go, oh, let me ask you some questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that whether it be my music, whether it be working more traditional, you know, uh, it's two dimensional or three dimensional mediums. Why I'm <laughs> lacking some way to say artsy things that today I don't know. But yeah. whatever the medium is that they're bringing already to me, an ability how their world. Yeah. Them. Um, getting kind of addictive, I'll be honest. <laughs> it is fascinating because every one of us lives inside the world inside our mind and we we've never experienced anything different than what we experience inside our mind so um to be able to open that up in any way to understand that in some way that what we're experiencing now is such a reduction of the possibility of what can be seen that any any ability to um or any interest in seeing what other people see yeah, that opens up a whole new world, doesn't it? Right. And I, 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 I believe that we are at a moment globally on a cusp, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I see opposing waves of do we, do we repeat things? Or is there this interesting, there's, as much as we are drawn to the fire, there's a noticeable empathic wave going on as well. Mm -hmm. A, a, a counter-move go what if what if we look at the world a little bit differently yeah you know that it's a brave new world it's you know what it's one where with modern technology people of the world can finally have like a rich discourse and I, on the theory of looking around and seeing what's happened with the people running that are running it now part of me goes and not only can we have a rich discourse we might need to talk <laughs> we got some things to talk about you know uh collectively we got some issues we need to figure out you know uh the adults are gonna have to uh stop working for a minute and go deal with the kids we left in charge uh that's gonna be a necessary thing to have happen here yeah it's definitely true there's um just the uh, there could possibly be a change i don't know you know sometimes when i look at history all that's really done with history they say well we don't want to repeat history and some people will make connections from one component of history to another and say those things are the same things but i don't necessarily know if i believe that i think life is changing all the time I, and i think we can make correlations and connections but um life inevitably changes that's the nature of life you know life, life finds a way yeah, that's our that's our Jeff Goldblum moment of the day. He's gladly, <laughs> gladly sponsored. No, I wish. I wish we had a Jeff Goldblum moment of the day sponsored by Jeff Goldblum. That would be awesome. <laughs> It'd be spectacular. So, how do you guys work? And take that as your as your meaning. As somebody that thinks about things like right livelihood, my definition of work might be very different from somebody else that just I go to the job every day. But 
the guy that goes to the job every day may go, well, my real work though is I'm a musician, but yeah, I go do this thing. You know, like Johnny Depp saying, you know, actually I'm a musician. Acting was paying the bills. I really don't really like doing it that much. What I really want to be is a musician. That's a quote. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it sucks to get stuck being a million dollar actor. I, I, I will say this. He was very grateful. It, it was in no way taken. He, he wasn't like crappy like, and then I got stuck being Johnny Depp. He was yeah. like, he's like, don't get me wrong. I love what I'm doing. Yeah. But they wouldn't let me do, you know, they wanted me to do music and be a pop icon. Didn't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. What's your, what do you, what do you think of as your work? Well, it's funny. We, we talk about this all the time because now we, we don't work. Yeah. There's no work being done. <laughs> as, as one of the most active posters in the compassionate world out there in the internet a man on a mission like literally these things the most moving things you've ever read written by rick written by janelle beautiful pictures to go with them and it I, what i love is so you're saying it's play yeah, that's all we do now. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, you know, I talk about this all the time. If we're doing work, we're in our heads. Yeah. But if we're, if we're living in the moment and it's playing and, um, we're doing what, what occurs to us in the moment, right. then there is no work. It's, it's, uh, very Dow. If, uh, and, and I didn't know what Dow was when, when we started this all out. Like, I had no idea what Dow meant. But, um, it's that you just you just live and enjoy each moment mindfully. Right. Uh, there there is no work. Like I, I used to. I'm I'm retired. I just retired a year ago. But before I retired, I had a job that I went to. But since Janelle's um, insight that you know changed both of our lives, even when I went to that job, even when I I went to my place of employment, I. I was doing a lot less work. I, now I would still get in my head like everybody does when when they go to their place of employment, but it was much less, and it was much more play, and um, yeah, I, it, it was almost hard to retire because uh, I was enjoying going to the job so much. The only thing that I was the only thing that was work for me was getting up in the morning and actually driving there. <laughs> I, I understand that. As but, a guy that used to drive for a living. <laughs> yeah, but uh, actually being at work, like, I actually very much enjoyed my job. I enjoyed the people I was working with. That's but meaningful. It was, say that again? I said that's really meaningful. That Even in finding... The leap can be, yeah, that in finding a peaceful place to exist no matter where you are. Yeah, and, and the thing is, um, with getting up to go to work, is now that I'm retired, I get up when my body tells me to get up. But when you, when you um, work for a living, you have to set an alarm. And if you're not sleeping well that night, that bothers you. And because you know you're going to have to get up in a few mo few hours and You've got to be at your best for your for your job, and um, it was it was those kinds of things that would play on my mind, and those are all things of time. And time is just a man-made concept, just a man-made uh, construct that we've invented, basically to torture ourselves. Right. <laughs> right. I, I I often look at Ross and I say, you know, I know you're feeling impatient. I promise that's you and not the universe. The universe is just plodding along at its own. It's doing its thing. It, 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 you're the impatient one. <laughs> i tell you what, what you were talking about with sleep really resonated with me because my favorite time of year was always summer because of the fact that I could go to sleep when I needed to and I could wake up when I needed to. I didn't have to be anywhere. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was go to sleep, wake up, eat food, play video games then go back to sleep like oh, the joys of youth it's wasted yeah. on the young yeah. it's it's truly wasted on the young 
new plan. We're going to educate people for 18 years, 12 months out of the year. When you graduate, you get to start taking summers off. <laughs> I will. I will look for. I will look forward to when I when I don't have to sleep on a schedule anymore, and I could just go back. I could just go to sleep whenever I feel like it. That yeah. that that's that's the dream right there. That's the the top. <laughs> I always found that um so back when I was gainfully employed as opposed to trying to start a nonprofit. Um back when I was gainfully employed if you took a week off that so the first few days yeah I would tend to sleep. But what happens pretty quickly for me is my schedule kind of re my natural place to get up is between 6 and about 7, mm. you know. I, I'm built like a caveman. I'd rather have a short sleep and a long sleep. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> but so it sounds to me like what you guys have tried to embrace is sort of a so there's three questions that I I list as three questions. But I run into I've I've got a specific thing up that even represents the idea of working and playing and praying as one thing. Um it for me so for for me it's a, it's an old school um like if you picture a guy heading off to the factory in the 50s or 60s mug coffee you know one of the, the old ones that you would carry with the metal lid and all of that and then there's a buddha with his hands digging up in the air and i've got a giant ever played jacks as a kid the ball yeah. and the i've got a jack that's probably i don't know six or seven inches tall so and then I've got the I've got the three of them together, and a thing behind it says, you know, enjoy the journey. There's also, in all honesty, part of the tableau is also a skeleton. Nothing's permanent. Um, and there's Bilbo Baggins is there too, and he might be holding a ring so that you remember not to get too attached to things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even 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 my my spiritual side has a good bit of whimsy. That's beautiful. <laughs> But is, is that kind of the discovery that Rick was sort of pointing to was that you came to the point where you felt like those three for life to have meaning, those three things needed to be connected as opposed to separated. Well, one of the things that happens when, when, uh, like Janelle had this really incredible insight. It was, if you know anything about Eckhart Tolle, he had his moment. Well, she should sort of had an Eckhart Tolle moment. And uh, since then, it's kind of uh, opened our our life up. It's, uh, we actually had our uh, nine year anniversary just yesterday. <laughs> my congratulations. congratulations! Awesome. Nine year anniversary of my insight. <laughs> of, her, of her insight. Oh, it was, okay. It was, it was Still congratulations. <laughs> Still congratulations. Yeah. No, You're... we've been together for twenty three years. Yeah. Yeah. And and. Um, Nine of them have been happy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Nine of them have been happy ones. I love that. As, I love that answer. As a man who will be celebrating his 21st anniversary this year and has been with a woman for 23 years. So, what's your there secret, you Janelle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just, um, it's not so much anything that we do or that we try to do. Yeah. It's it's got nothing to do with that at all, no. because I spent my whole life um, <clears throat> prior to my insight thinking that something should be different than it is, whether it's myself or the world or whatever. And I tried to do things to make that change. And there there was um, constant suffering in that because I would always find things that um, needed to be changed. And mm. it was constant. Um, striving and efforting and never enough and never right and um once i had my insight i i just saw a different world so instead of being a place where i had to effort i understood that oh this is life and everything that informs my experience of it is entirely in my feelings in the moment and mm -hmm. i can use my feelings as a guide so if i'm feeling tense or anxious or angry i just know i'm not present i'm not clear um, my lens is blurry 
um, I'm seeing much less than the greater truth of things in front of me. And if I am lighthearted and I've got, a, you know, I find things funny and um, <clears throat> I'm feeling joyful or even if I'm feeling relaxed or peaceful or, or whatever, I know that um, I'm, I'm just living, you know, and I'm closer to the present moment and I can see things from a wider perspective. So I don't do anything anymore. <clears throat> I don't try to change myself. I don't try to fix myself or other people for the most part. Believe me, when I get back in my head sometimes, I... <laughs> hey, human's gonna human. It's practice all the way down. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. It's an ongoing um, It's an ongoing lesson every day to just keep... Um, so all it is is just awareness. I, and every moment I'm, it occurs to me to do things and I'm getting more and more discernment for the state of feeling from which I'm doing it. And it guides me. Do you think you're so, do you think you're better able to like identify what's going on? Like when like when you're when you're outside of the moment and you feel like you're you're feeling something more than you're you're in the moment. Do you think you can figure out exactly what's going on a little bit better just by letting go of uh I don't know. Do you think you can figure it out better? It doesn't it, seem like yeah. it's allowed a clarity. Yes. And, and that not being as attached to the answers, that it allows you a clarity and working your way through them and a better understanding of your emotional state in a way that allows you to actually see it as information to deal with as opposed to react to. There you go. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, a, a, an, a, you know, a thought comes up. And if it's an angry thought or a frustrated thought, I immediately know I'm heading in the wrong direction. Mm. And that I, whatever the situation is, I can see it from a different perspective. Now, it doesn't mean that I can change it because I spent a lot of time trying to change my thoughts and feelings and none of it ever worked for me. So all it is is just awareness. Yeah. I'm aware that, um, you know, I'm in a bad state of mind or I'm angry or I'm frustrated. Right. And because I am, I have an awareness of it, that's all I need. Because it, it says to me, you know, don't get involved in this. Don't hang on to the story. Don't fight back. Don't, um, and, it, and, it, and, and even if I do that, that's okay. There's still a, a okay, you're just caught up in your craziness. I call it my personal crazy. I, I, I totally, you don't do oh, go ahead, Rick. Oh, I was just going to say that we, we don't hang on too much very long. Like we'll still get, we're, we're human. We have our human emotions. Yeah. And, and I actually feel that uh, the reason we're here is to, well, I, I call it our gifts. I call thought and our emotions one of our divine gifts. That this is something we've been given so that we can come here and play and enjoy them. And even anger, like, well, if, if I get angry, well, that's just a human emotion. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to... Um, Believe it? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's why we can let it go. Is because after, after you've had the experience and you've allowed yourself to be angry, you can let it go. You don't have to uh, hold on to it for a day or for a week or for, for years. Some people will have an incident happen to them and hold on to it for their... Some of them, the rest of their the lives. Rest of their life, right, right. Attached yeah. to a piece that's a weight, right, holding it's, them down. Yeah, yeah. But it's the, it's the same whether you hold on to it for the rest of your life, or if you're still stewing about it for a week. That whole week that you're stewing about it, it's upsetting your whole chemical body. Like everything in your body is reacting to it. You're having, you know, you, your belly is going to start aching. Your head's going to be full of fog to start with. You're not going to be thinking clearly. Somebody completely innocent is going to say something to you. Um, maybe in jest, you're going to take it wrong. You're going to you're going to explode at that person when that person had nothing to do with why you were originally angry. <laughs> and you, it, it's like a snowball going downhill. Once you start believing your thoughts, then everything just sort of 
builds up and builds up and builds up. Well, you lose control. You know, yeah, you control. I didn't. I didn't believe that your head like had any control over your body until one day my stomach was hurting and I couldn't figure out why. I tried to go mm -hmm. eat and that didn't work. I tried to go use the bathroom. That didn't work. And then I realized I was upset about something. I don't remember yeah. what I was upset about that day or anything, <laughs> but I remember that sometimes just you being upset can affect the way that your body acts yeah. in, in <laughs> weird ways, you know? Yeah, that's where your body can be um, a really good messenger for you. Yeah. You that's can immediately good. feel tenseness or uh, discomfort. And the more you have a discernment for it, the more, the more aware you are of it, um, the more ability you have then to um, just allow it, not engage with it. Um, use the word barometer quite often. Yeah, it's mm. like... You know, it, it tells me which weather I'm in right now. Yeah. And it tells right. me I need to um, put on a raincoat or <laughs> grab an umbrella. <laughs> you it, know, it doesn't tell you who you are. It tells you where you it are. It just tells you where you it are. It gives exactly. you information. So I, I like, so have you yeah. have you guys ever seen the, um, the movie A Beautiful Mind with uh, Russell Crowe? Uh, Russell, Russell Crowe. Russell Crow. Yes. Russell uh, again, so <laughs> <laughs> Right? Oh, you get the point. Meaning of the minds. Uh, <laughs> it, so uh, it's a, a movie I've always enjoyed. Um, a part of the way I see the world relates to a little bit of the way he sees patterns in the movie. Yeah. But it was the realization the last time we watched it. I was introducing it to Ross. I felt he needed to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> we do that around here sometimes. You know, you need to see this movie. Um, that. I began, so just to back up a little bit, my mantra back when I was being a tough guy in my late teens and early 20s was pain is just an electrical signal sent to my brain. Give me information. Once I've received it, I can ignore it. Mm -hmm. I began, so as we watched A Beautiful Mind last time, I began thinking of my anxiety, my fears, as like the, the people in A Beautiful Mind that he can see. Mm -hmm. but they don't have control over them anymore. But for me, that it was still a form of information. I could still assess that that was there. Yes. I, I deal with a great deal of anxiety. Um, just a part of who I am physically as a human being. Um, there's yeah. a, I, I like to think that traditionally suggests that your electrical is off a little bit versus chemicals. But saucy little bag of chemicals, a little bit of Thor thrown in. Yeah. That, um, <laughs> The reality is that by turning it into your superpowers, your warning system, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, as opposed to your, oh my gosh, and then my brain triggers and I have to react this way. Right. Yeah. It, it's so my mom's. It's always invite your demons to tea. Don't fight with them. My mom. Yeah. My, my mom's got a mindfulness background. I I I lucked into this Eastern philosophy thing. Baked based on a degree she decided to get before I was born. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that there's something, to, her other big thing is resting in it, that you're going to have real feelings. Yes. You don't beat yep. you. You have to rest in them and, okay, what does that mean? The signal, you're getting information. Well, sit down with your teletype or whatever and translate. Yeah, and even being okay when you don't get an answer from that. Yeah. <laughs> That will happen a lot too. Is um, I still get all sorts of experiences where um, I'm feeling depressed or I'm anxious or I'm um, out of sorts or whatever it is, and I just can't find it. I can't figure out what you know what's triggering it or where it's coming from. And the side of me that wants to figure it out doesn't feel good inside my body, you know. But it's still inside okay, I'm, I'm experiencing something right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't need to figure it out. I don't have to change it. Um, I, an awareness arises. Oh, this is okay. It's kind of like... I'm, I'm okay even when I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm okay mm. even when I'm... And I'm trusting my... Um, 
like the, this is the other thing is that we live in this body that is incredibly complex. And, you know, when I even contemplate it for a moment about how many cells there are and how many atoms there are in my body and that it just turns certain atoms into skin and certain atoms into my eyes and, and, and it manages to kind of hold it all together you know, and, and do all these complex things that no one really fully understands. It's amazing. It, yeah. And it just reminds me that, well, it's doing that for me all the time anyway. So all these feelings that are coming up, um, it's my body doing something. Mm, right. Well, <laughs> and, and just kind of allowing for that intelligence, not having to figure it out. That there's a chemical experiment going on, whether you want it or not. That's right. <laughs> that, that, that's, it's part of our reality is that so that we've got this mind body connection, then we've all tricked ourselves before. Okay. Now who was that third person there? You know, yeah. that, and that there's, it's, it's equipment working. I, I was, yeah. I was teasing yeah. Ross earlier today about the fact that if I wanted to build a self-replicating carbon based quantum computer system, yeah. I don't know, humans. I'm pretty sure we okay. A self replicating yeah, no, I think we got it covered. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Were we seated? No, I don't know. I don't really think all of that. But I always find it interesting to think about the fact that I I think the greatest most wasted asset on the planet is seven and a half billion perspectives to look at any problem and in a joyful way like you got very much that like oh let's figure this out why are we fighting da, 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 da. this is fun yeah so guys what do you love i think i think it's become I think obvious i know the answer at least for the last nine years each other we, we've accepted <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> There's still times when, you know. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> well, well we, we look at love totally different. Yeah. Totally, true. totally different. Okay. Um, How do you look at from it? From what it was before Janelle had her insight. Um, now, the love that we have for each other is the same love that we have for the planet and for every other person in the world. It's, it's a completely different different love than the love of want, the love of desire, the love of need, the love of, um, uh, you it's, know, it's I, 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 want, I want to share my emptiness with you, yep. is the way that I described it before. Um, you know, w when, you, when you look at um, how we've misused the word love, mm. and, and uh, now, with Janelle's insight, and once her, her big insight was that um, we're yeah, all we're that, all the that, same. That everything was impersonal, unconditional love, like and uh, yeah, and it was a um, a love that I had never experienced in my life before. It was um, much greater than any love I had ever had for anything or anyone. None of my family, um, Rick. Um, all my past loves in life, it was way greater than that. And I saw how, um, and, and at the same time, it was oddly impersonal. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a love for anything. In a way, when I reflected on now, it was love as a state of being. Yeah. A, and a love for, end of sentence. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Keep going. Um, you're, I'm totally on board and agree. <laughs> I concur yeah. wholeheartedly. <laughs> so I know that any love that I feel for anything, like for Rick, it's um, it's not really in in, in truth love. Um, it's feelings of affection and uh, uh, irritation and all the the you know <laughs> the mix of things that happen. Right. But because I know that that true unconditional impersonal love is not limited to rick i can have it for anything and anyone in any moment mm. i just have to be present to it yeah, and yeah. So, it's, yeah. Seeing, it's seeing the divinity in everything it's seeing the divinity in everything this, this yeah. is uh well there's nothing 
for Janelle and I, there is nothing that is not God. Everything is God. Now, the word God is not God. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. when, I, right. when I say God, when I say God, unfortunately, you're already got a concept in your head what what you think I'm saying, and unfortunately, whatever that concept is that you think I'm saying, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. You're giving yeah. my speech, so I am more than willing to he, say yes. Listen, listen, I will tell, I'm, I'm willing to tell you guys because you can't see him right now. He is over here gushing. He's beaming. He's like, they're giving my speech. I don't even have to say a thing. Okay, this is wonderful. This is amazing. Yeah, there's a beautiful question by um, uh, Father Gregory Boyle of Humboldt Industry that says, um, Whatever you think God is, it's too small. Yeah. Mm. And every religious text starts off by saying that. Yeah. Is the funny part. So, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I, I had a I had a thought and it it was I, I didn't I didn't connect these two, but I was having a similar thought to you because I thought about God as I used to think of God as, okay, God is the best version of yourself. But what I didn't connect it to is if God is the best version of yourself, then everyone has God in them. Everyone. everyone. Without a doubt. Everyone yeah. has God in them. So, I'm not gonna, this is a funny story. So my mom, who I mentioned earlier, grew up in a, an, in a Judeo-Christian, like a really, a really strong Christian family upbringing. Right. Um, and, but then she went off and got her degree in Eastern philosophy, took me off to the yoga center. And, but we also always went to church as part of community. Right. Yeah. You'd go to a new town. It didn't really didn't matter which group. But she'd she'd pick whichever church she. We went to different ones. It didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so she's she's been as we've actually. My mom is a yoga instructor. She studied Reiki, lots of mindfulness stuff. She spent a bunch of time at Kripalu studying, you know, yoga there. Um. She comes to me. This is literally maybe six months ago at best. She goes, you know, I've been thinking about this. You know what? I might be Buddhist. <laughs> and I said, Mom, 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 are you part of the universe? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, don't worry, we already have covered. You always were. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's an all thing, no thing kind of thing. It's yeah, it's a. I, yeah, I agree. I think you're part of the universe too. <laughs> you're a big part of mine. <laughs> We always joke about the fact that the difference between Buddha and Christ was Buddha stayed around long enough to keep slapping hands when people got it wrong. That the yeah. problem was, if you're yeah. not there, to keep going, no. They will mess up your message, man. No. Completely. Stop that. <laughs> well, no, Jesus had to, the, the closest he got was he messed up the, uh, the bank and everything. He, he, yeah. broke, he broke up the, the bank and stuff like that. But, like, yeah. that's... But yeah. is it real? No, is it real? Is it, maybe even maybe they made up that story. I don't even know, man. <laughs> Who knows at this point? We shall see. It doesn't matter. We shall Exactly. See, it doesn't the, matter. So what happened was, so we went down this path where we started. Okay, I did. Um, started off by watching a thing on kind of the history of Christian text. I have studied some of the history of the text as far as timing. And so I began meditating a lot on the organic aspect of wisdom. Mm. And so one of the things I came to was the idea, it doesn't matter whether or not stories are, are true. That's true. It doesn't, so like wisdom by its nature is going to pass through the organic us. And then it's yeah. going to go through this fractured lens, which we all discussed today about right. the idea our lenses are fractured. Which is us. Which is yeah. us. <laughs> and so that there's this thing that happens, whether you look at, you know, it's, hundred years plus before any of Christianity stuff gets written down. It's been longer when we talk about how long was the written word for Judaism or Hinduism or Buddhism. It, it doesn't matter the source. It mm -hmm. matters whether or not it's wise. Yeah, you know, um, one of the things about speaking of any perspective is and it gets back to the, the state of your your inner being in the moment. So I can share anything with anyone in the moment, and I can talk about a religion or my beliefs, 
And those beliefs will not be true if I'm not in a good state of mind. If I'm judgmental, if I'm angry, if I'm irritated, I could say the exact same words, but it's the state of mind from which I share them that makes the difference. So you can read something in the Bible or read something in the Quran or read a, a Buddhist spiritual practice. You can read Alice in Wonderland. You can read Alice in Wonderland. You can read, <laughs> you know, um, it's the state of mind from which you um, live it, from which you share it, and from which you receive it. So, and that is where that is where truth and wisdom lies. So, the more, you know, some people will share the exact same, um, you know, passage from the Bible, and one person will be doing it from a state of beautiful love and grace and wisdom and understanding, and you can just see and feel the truth in it. And another person will, will use it in a negative way because um, they're in a bad state of mind, <laughs> you know, and they're being judgmental and um, close minded and um, they're using it for, um, uh, you know, negative ways to protect themselves. Well, and uh, yeah, I've really been it, sold on the idea that there's no such thing as good and bad because good people yeah. are going to be good people and bad people are going to be bad people. And the reason I say it like that is because if you look at any religion, there's good people and there's bad people. Doesn't yeah. mean that doesn't mean that they're good or bad. It means that they're expressing good and they're expressing bad. They're expressing these different ideas in different ways. But no matter how you look at it, the religion has some truth in it. Each religion has some sort of truth in it. Yeah. And it's just, it's just for us to have the eyes to see it. I mean, since my insight, I saw that everything, everything in life was this impersonal, unconditional love. Yeah. And there was perfection and beauty in all of it. And so the only reason why we see anything else other than beauty, um, perfection, wonder, awe, humor, joy, is because we're lost in the moment. You know, or our eyes are clouded, we're um, in a bad state of mind. And so goes for every single other human being on the planet. So if I see someone behaving badly, um, I know they hurt. Yeah, they're just hurting. You know, yeah. it, it's very true that that statement that, um, you know, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Um, it's a hundred percent true every time. Um, if because but I, it, it all comes from the same place, though, Matt. Yeah. You see, it all comes from every one of us has a thought. Mm. And we're trying to have thoughts. We've, we have thousands of them every day. Uh, we've seen things where it says forty to 60,000 and, and even up a day. So you have all these thoughts. But the thing is, you don't have to believe those thoughts. And it's when you believe your thought that makes you act on them. You don't act on the thought. You don't give it any power. It's only once you give it power that it becomes good or it becomes the behavior of good or bad. Mm. Kind of what Ross was saying about uh, it's not it's not so much um, it's not a matter of good or bad. It's it's the behavior that comes from it because you believe in the thought. Right. The motivation. Right. That, that right that it's whether or not I I so. It's a constantly. I I I talk about the idea of not being. I've given up schools with walls for a world with lessons. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I, 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 I'm really good at reflecting things in a way that turns them into pretty words. We're trying to make a living off it. Um, <laughs> what do you fear? What scares you though? Well, that's that's a good one for us. We've talked about uh, this is basically the fear question, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, fear is not real, <laughs> <laughs> but I engage in it all the time. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. The it's not killer. a. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. The feeling inside. So if I'm in an experience where I'm feeling fear. Um, there's nothing that I have to do about it. And the more I can just rest with the feeling and not try to 
change it or get rid of it, um, the more I get back to clarity and the less I'm in fear. And um, yeah. So the story I was thinking of, one of the reason I threw that at you, Janelle, was uh, Janelle, before her insight, would uh, talk to me about fear, and I would tell her that I, I'm not afraid of anything. And this oh, was yeah. Be, this, was this, before her, this was before her insight. I'd say, oh, that doesn't, I'm not afraid of anything. And she always thought I was in denial that, uh, you know, that. <laughs> you, mean, you mean that river in Egypt? No, um, go ahead. <laughs> She thought, you're human, you have, you have fear. fears. And I, I just couldn't think of anything that I was afraid of. So after her insight, um, we had a discussion about fear again. Do you remember exactly how it came up? Yeah, so I was. we were just talking about fears, or I was talking about fears, and I said, oh, gosh, I have so many fears. I've had so many fears throughout all my life. And um, I said, um, you know, don't you have fears? And he says, no, I, I don't have any fears. And this time, instead of thinking that um, he was in denial, I was, because of my insight, a bit more open to listening and hearing something that I hadn't heard before. So all the times he had denied before, I heard something. And I thought, well, what do you mean you don't have fears? I need to understand this because you don't like when you buy something and you have to return it to the store. You don't like going into a crowd of people that you don't know and, um, uh, you know, having to make a chit chat with a bunch of people you don't know. You don't like uh, returning a bad meal at a restaurant. Aren't those fears? <laughs> because, I, because I have the same things. And, and he looks at me and says, well, no, those aren't fears. Those are just things I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's brilliant. But it's accepting that's that that's one. okay. Yeah. There, there's a yeah. thing of like, Oh, wow. So those things I fear, one of the options is like, screw that. I don't want to you do know, it. I don't want to do it. You know. <laughs> okay. A big window for me how I interpret a should behavior and not being able to do it or not wanting to do it as a fear. I label that as a fear in my mind. And so I experience it as what I think fear is. Right. Mm. He would have experience, and there would be no internal judgment on him on it. It would just be stuff he didn't like to do, and um, it, it just really opened up my eyes to, oh, okay, again, it, we're living in an, an entirely two different planets here. <laughs> yeah. Know? I didn't realize and how much we changed our... my perception of fear. Um, I still have fear the same way, and he still has his experiences his way. But we understand ourselves and each other a lot better because of it. it it's sort of like people will say, uh, well, because Janelle and I like to go on trails. We are, we're out in the forest quite often. And uh, people will say, oh, aren't you afraid of bears? Well, if we were afraid of bears, we wouldn't go on the trails. <laughs> but we go on the trails, and if we run into a bear, if a bear happens to be in the path, Janelle will get much more frightened than I will, and she'll start backing away. I'll back away, get my camera ready, come out and take a couple of pictures. <laughs> admit, that's stupid. That's, you know, that doesn't have so much to do with fear as stupidity. <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that I'm not, um, I'm not aware that a bear can really mess you up. And um, I don't do dangerous things, uh, unnecessary dangerous things. Um, but... I don't stop myself from doing anything because of fear. Mm, that's important. Yeah. That's no, really that. important. To... If 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 an if a experience opens up for me to try something, like I've never jumped out of an airplane, you know, without a without a or with a parachute. Uh, but if um, someone said, you know, we've got a group of people, do you want to go? I might consider it. I want to say, please don't do it without one. We like you, Rick. We'd yeah, like to have jump, you here. That, don't that jump without one. That you had one, there a okay? minute ago where you were jumping without I know, a parachute. I know it was a mess up word. Like, you messed up your words a little bit, but, like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Jumping out of a without a parachute, I probably wouldn't do, and there is a component of fear in that. <laughs> you know what? I am afraid of that. That's one thing I'm afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
we no, nailed him look, down. <laughs> we got him. This this is all part of the same concept, though. Yeah. Because you're giving me a hypothetical. Mm. I'm not in a plane right now. Right, right, right. So for you to say, well, would you jump out of a plane without a parachute? Well, like, that's that's not my reality. I, I'm in this moment. I'm sitting in a very comfortable chair. There's no plane. <laughs> There's no planes here. No. Chair, and I'm not going to get badly hurt. And I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love this. I really. You guys are such a joy. I, you guys are awesome. I, I, you know, I think we've covered a lot of what you feel like you know. So no. And, anything i know know. your answer rick but at the same time we have a moment of of coming to terms with a knowing that we and it's the hardest thing to describe to people how do you describe that there was a moment in my life where i came to terms where the one thing i learned was that i didn't know things well okay they like that doesn't make sense people argue with me what do you mean you don't know anything i don't know man i don't know anything (laughs) yeah Yeah. well i actually had a really like Janelle had her experience and I had kind of a freaky moment myself one time I um had a waking it was it's not a waking dream because as I woke I heard a voice in my head as clearly as anyone has ever spoken to me but I knew I wasn't hearing it with my ears I knew it was coming from something other than ears but I was hearing it and the voice plainly said, Traveler, see beyond your beliefs. And uh, that was quite a life-changing moment for me also, because I saw, even though at that time I thought that I didn't know what I thought I knew, I saw that I was still holding on to things that I believed that I knew and turning them into beliefs. And once I did that, I realized I am no longer open to the universe to show me something new. As soon as I take any single thing and say, yeah, I know that, I am now not open to the universe anymore. anymore. Can't I can't hear anymore. anymore. I've, I've placed myself in a box and said, well, this is true. And I just, so I just don't have any truths to tell anybody. You know, I'll tell them what my experience is. I'll tell them what my thoughts are on on my experience but anyone who comes to me and t- asks me what what is the truth I'll, uh, i don't have a truth for you <laughs> yeah, i don't have a piece of that this is another one where no you're this these this is the same i one of the reasons obviously i reached out to you rick was that you share a lot of thoughts as well that there are a lot of pieces that resonate deeply with me in the ways both of you communicate the feelings we have and how to, yeah, the second I put a word to something, I know I've defined it as something lesser than it is. Yes, yeah. You've it, given it form. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've, right, I've tried to, and then I'm never, for me, it's, my touchstone is that I'm never, I'm never going to see the ships on the horizon now. Yes. Which, you know, that, that, and that's that reference to, it was South America as the ships are showing up and the, the yeah, medicine yeah, man. Yeah, it was the. Touch their see forehead them. Yeah. And then... yeah. In, in my head that I, I know I'm missing ships on the horizon. I know that I don't know. And that the less I'm attached to what I don't know, the more likely I am to find a piece that I didn't expect. The closer... yeah, you know, how uninteresting is it to know? It sucks. It's no fun. It's what's the point? I tell you what, the it's closest so I'll get boring, to not you knowing know? is saying that I don't know myself. I don't know myself. I know that for sure good place to start yeah. yeah and it's okay to not know yourself you're complicated yeah. oh my god how could you possibly know yourself really it's too much going on too much going on dude way <laughs> too much going on there's vestigial <laughs> neural tissue at every place that we thought what did there you were say like rows. thousands of thoughts it, it must be higher than that i don't i don't i man i don't even know what's going on there, there are days you know that... what, maybe you know what? I agree with you guys. I don't know what's going on. You know what? I'm there. I'm there today. You know what? I, I concede. I, I have no clue what's going on at all. 
Yeah, and what beautiful freedom there is in that. You know, Absolutely. like you can, feel, you can feel the lightheartedness and the ease in it. And um, yeah, anytime you can actually you, experience life. Yeah, you can experience, you can see all sorts of things in front of you that you never saw before. It, yeah. It, it's like if you were going through life trying to carry a bunch of things in your hands and carrying a bunch of stuff with you. Mm -hmm. And now think of your day to day, but now while you're carrying all that, you're gonna try and experience all of this stuff. Yeah. That's a good It's never gonna yeah. work, your hands yeah. are full. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. no room in your teacup, there's no, I don't know. There's a, <laughs> a million metaphors. <laughs> don't hoard thoughts, okay? Yeah. It's not good. Don't hoard thoughts, it's not good, there no, we go. No, it's not good, there's not enough space, man. A, a wise no man or some sisters once said, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. That was horrible. Don't don't ever listen to me. Let it go again. Okay, come on. Somebody, some someone needs to smack me the next time I think I can sing that song. <laughs> so, I think, I think, we've gotten to what you don't know too. That we've really covered the nose along the way here. Why are you here? Yeah, it's something I think about. We, um, we always talk about we're here to play. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Rick had a great metaphor one time when he said, um, we're just the nerve endings for universal consciousness. Wow. And, the nerve endings for universal consciousness. That's yeah, that, just that the energy of life can't experience itself. And so it reduces itself temporarily into these human and um, various forms, human forms, animal forms, rocks, Every, trees, desks, everything. Right. Everything is, of energy is, is everything of energy is just reduced. a sensory. And it gives an experience to the universe. So, wow. so it doesn't matter what experience I have, good or bad, it's just as valuable to universal consciousness as anything is. So this this goes back to Ross's point about good and bad. Yeah, there's no good or bad, and there's I see that I I work with the homeless a fair amount, and um, it's kind of a question that comes up. Well, they should be having a better life, and they should be doing it in a different way, or not be addicted, or <clears throat> not do the terrible things that some of them have to do just to survive, and uh, well, that Rick's insight kind of comes back to me all the time. Oh, their experience is just as valid as anyone else's and just as valuable and divine as anyone else's because it, human. it offers universal consciousness or whatever the heck that is, <laughs> <laughs> whatever we are, um, an opportunity to experience something okay. and learn. We've got a little funny thing that we do is uh, if we if we have something that happens, like let's say you have a car repair, something unexpected, something that most people would call um, problem uh, a problem. Something bad happens. It yeah. is how it gets labeled. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. And uh, Janelle and I will just look at each other and smile and we'll look up and we'll say, well, there you go, universe. There's your experience. Are you, Are you happy? happy? Are you happy? Are you happy now? Okay, you inconvenienced me. Are you happy? Are you, are you enjoying this? You know. Are you enjoying? <laughs> you sick bastard! Do you like this? <laughs> well, and that's that's my speed bump analogy. That it's very much a. So, oh, we were talking today about how I got kicked in Kickstarter by Kickstarter earlier <laughs> this week. Um, they decided that they didn't like the way I had written that, and we switch to a different platform for fundraising because we're going to need to do some of that. Yeah. But that there's the moment of, ah, ha, 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 watch me pivot, watch me play, that this is not, that punch in the face is a speed bump in your life. It's a moment where the universe is saying, oh, maybe you need to slow down, go a little fast. Looks like we're rolling into a school zone here. Might be some <laughs> things you need to learn. Right? Just, you know what? Um, just letting you know, rain makes the flowers grow. Uh, struggle rings the school bell, and I suggest you get your pencil out and take notes. <laughs> yeah, because every experience can can be experienced from just a state of interest and observation and, um, you know, kind of neutrality. Um, but we're the ones who add 
add the experience into it and and put all the labels on it and um and it's not that some situation will ever change for me but knowing that i'm the one that's creating my experience of it somehow is it, it allows me to kind of let go of the reins yeah that amazing it's like once we know we have the reins we're more comfortable letting go of them yeah like yeah. Oh, okay so how i let this affect me i have I could decide. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll do well, that. No, the fear of control comes from the idea that you think you don't have control. Yeah. That's well, where that's it really it. that's where it really comes from is the fact that once you feel like once you constantly feel like everything is out of your control, yeah. you have a fear of control. Like it, it has control over you. It it affects you. My bad. It affects <laughs> it affects you and it it really like it so, yeah. takes control over you for lack of a better term. Yeah. yeah, and then once you really understand deeply that you actually have absolutely no control in any way, shape, or form whatsoever, that's complete freedom. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that in the yeah. end, all you have control over is kind of interesting. What is, you know, it's not even a what does that mean? It's a, yeah, it's, no, there is a freeing moment of not being as attached to the, yeah. I don't. To so yeah. there was a great speech in Hunger Games uh, where Katniss is crying how people aren't doing what she's decided they ought to do. And I forget who gives her the speech about the fact that that's not what leadership's about. You can't control the way people are going to show up. People mm -hmm. are going to show up the way they show up. Yeah. You know, you have ability, the light in this particular case, it was. Hunger Games, so you have the ability to light this flame, you know, to to draw these people to you, but right. you don't. Get you don't to get to tell them, "Hey, you got to show up, man." Well, you don't get to decide exactly how they're going to show up. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to. You can't tell them, "Hey, I need you to come with blah 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 blah." No, that's not your place. You you just do what you got to do. People that are gonna show up are gonna show up how they show up. You know. Yeah. yeah. That, that gets back to that internal feeling like you can be a leader who's who wants to control and if you have a feeling that you want to control something you can feel it in your body it's tense and uncomfortable yeah. and it's yeah. relaxed you realize you don't have to control and you can see things much more clearly and you can work much more adeptly with whatever everybody shows up with you know like that that you can see them where they're at as opposed to assuming you have to somehow decide where they're at. Yeah, yeah. And it, as soon as we let go, as soon as we relax, as soon as we stop trying to control the world, as soon as we fall into a bit of grace, then we have a much wider lens. Wisdom, there's room for wisdom to appear. And um, there's... A, room for us to see new things that we didn't see before that can be very helpful in how we respond to the situation well that there's a lot more going on than we're able to pay attention to yes if we're lost in our own definition of what's already going on exactly yeah there's you know what you guys are saying i i i, I want to have more of these conversations we didn't get into my moment at 25, for instance, where I have similar conversations about, it. and then I felt like, and it all made, it, there's, there's so much we could talk about. Like literally, we, I could, I could talk to the two of you for hours. Three of you actually. <laughs> you guys are all awesome. All of you, all around, awesome. We love you too, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It, it, it's been an I I a, no I I really mean it when I say I hope we can do. That I, I always, I come away seeing myself, seeing somebody else, feeling very, like, seen. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that it, the odd part is, as even as the person asking the questions on the other side, I feel more visible. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I feel like I expose myself in a good way. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like, I feel like I was able, I would, I feel like. He's looking at me in the weirdest way because his mind took that so left. Oh my, <laughs> shut up, shut up. Stop thinking what you're thinking, okay? It wasn't that. That's why I said in a good way. Don't okay? expose yourself, please. It was, 
anyways, <laughs> what I was saying is, I feel like I, I feel like every time that we do, it feels like everybody tries to come into this situation, attempting to be themselves. And as it goes on, everybody genuinely falls into who they are, and they, you, you start to become yourself. You start to act how you act, and you start to feel like. Hey, I'm being myself right now. This feels really good. You know? You get to forget who you are, who you think you are. Yeah, <laughs> you get to put down the mask. Yeah. That's what we're all about here. That's really that's our mission. Our our mission was first we put on a podcast that was a show about not putting on a show. <laughs> yeah. One of the what that means is is basically we argue on shows sometimes. Sometimes not we're all just shows. not all shows. No, not most of the shows we're not arguing, really. But <laughs> it means that it means that whatever we're actually feeling at that time, we're gonna try and get it out, and we're gonna try yeah. and we're gonna try and feel it, and we're gonna try and actually be as real as possible. Yeah, well, that's a, because if you do it, it gives every uh, it gives everyone else permission to do the same. Right. Yep. And if you get just like you guys answering ten questions, it it <laughs> opens up it it. it all of the responses I've gotten regarding all of the ones that we've done so far is that it's eye-opening to the too. Yeah. That it's like, oh, we're allowed to look at each other and actually see each other? Like, it almost feels like that kind of thought. Like, oh, we could, we could all be okay and, like, see each other? Yeah, and then you'd feel less lonely. It'd be like, thing. get together, maybe have some falafels, you know. <laughs> You guys are amazing. And Rick, I believe you found your voice, sir. <laughs> well, I, I talk when I have something to say, but I try to listen more than I talk. He's a good, definitely a good listener. That's, that's huge. It, Dick Don Ha, just to give him a shout out here at the very end, most important thing, most valuable thing we can do. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's compassionate listening. It's yeah. Actually hearing the people around us in a way that's God, I, I could do this for hours. We're actually we ran about a half hour longer than normal, but I expected it to run kind of a little bit longer with the idea that, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, there's two of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much. Um, I will post a copy of this to your page, Rick, and we'll, I we'll talk again soon. I hope. Beautiful. Okay, thanks, Matt. It was a pleasure. Thank you. For the thanks, Ross. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know Ross is in the back. Sorry, Ross. <laughs> That's okay. Love you too, buddy. Oh, uh, love you guys. Love you guys. You guys Blessings are awesome, on your man. day. You've made mine blessed. That's for sure. Love you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye now. I use the bathroom.